Hello everyone and riddle me this, have you ever wondered what a hand trap the deck looks like? Well today we're going to be talking about it in the form of Lave Twins. Now this deck is, uh, it's very unique in that its core engine is so ridiculously small uh, that the amount of hand traps and general interruptions you can play in the deck is insane. Uh, so honestly that's, that, that's the big reason as to why this deck is successful. Its engine is small, compact, simple. Uh, it always works reliable. It has moderate impact on the metagame consistently. Uh, so it, it's always doing something. It's always interrupting you somehow. Uh, and then all of the hand traps you can stack in on top of that really add up to make the deck surprisingly powerful, all things considered. So again, we're going to be talking about a detailed deck profile at the end. Uh, the deck is fairly standardized. I actually think I was playing it slightly incorrectly. Uh, it should be three pink, two blue. Uh, but generally speaking, the deck is super formulaic. It's very, very straightforward. Uh, it's, it's really not that hard to work it out, to be perfectly honest with you. And yeah, we'll, we'll be talking about the combos and things as we're going along. You'll see it in the gameplay. It's like literally one combo. Uh, so again, if you like what you're seeing and you want to see any more, do subscribe, leave your comments down below for what you're doing. Now, lots of people play this deck a bit differently. Lots of people, uh, for example, some people include the Parallel Exceed, the Gwinda Babuska. Some people uh, don't play the Sky Cavalry for the Zeus. Like some, a lot of sort of differences between how people play it. So down below, I want you to tell me the things that you play, what makes you think that your version of it is, is better or at least more unique and gives it more unique properties. Maybe you're playing e Telly with Ghost Ogre. That's pretty interesting. I just don't have Ghost Ogre. Uh, that sort of stuff is pretty cool. I've, I've been sort of wanting to test it out and maybe sort of see its applications. But yeah, there's a whole ton of ways you can potentially play this deck. So honestly, the world is your oyster. And we're just going to dive uh, into the gameplay as soon as we possibly can. So again, as I said, if you want to see more, feel free to subscribe. We also have a Discord uh, where you can jump in, chat, share ideas, get ideas, uh, or even just lurk in chat if you need to. Uh, so again, the link to that will also be in the description if you feel like getting in and chatting with people. Uh, just shy of that, let's get into game number one. Already getting into game number one. We're going first and look at the hand. This is exactly what I mean. You're playing a super, super simple deck that just has lots of room for interruptions. Now, we're going to use our uh, secret password. So basically, this is one of the main searches of the deck. Secret password will search for Sunny Snitch. Sunny Snitch, when activated, will search for one of your live twins. Uh, you either want this or the, or the pink live twin. Uh, the main starters we'll get to at the end. And so that's full combo. That's it. That's the only thing you need. So this is now officially full combo. You normal summon one, it grabs the other, and then you link summon into pink. Pink will revive the blue from the grave. Link summon into blue. Uh, again, I just call them by the colors. Blue will then resummon the link to pink. Pink when summoned will draw one, and then you go into trouble. Sunny, your link for primary boss monster. And now that we've done all our plays, we're going to use pot of desires to try and draw in the more hand traps. We got a maxi. So look at this, we've got Imperm, Droplet, Nibiru, Maxi, and we've got the Trouble Sunny. Now what does Trouble Sunny do? Trouble Sunny will tribute itself during your opponent's turn to special summon both of the live twins from the graveyard. And what will that do? Well, the blue con blue live twin is gonna pop a card, the pink live twin is gonna draw a card. So basically, it just helps you gain lots of advantage. And then we've got five big, big, big interruptions. Our opponent's going to go for Foolish Burial to get the Water Enchantress of the Temple. Uh, we're going to chain to that Maxi. We don't want our opponent getting too crazy, but our, our guys got called by the Grave. So far enough. Uh, that doesn't mean we need to be a little bit more careful, but to be honest, that was his only call by target. It means that he's much less likely to have called by the Grave to hit our Trouble Sunny at the very least. Because uh, that is one of the biggest weaknesses. Trouble Sunny can be hit by Call by the Grave. So our opponent's going to go for the Raid of Aramis here. Now we're going to activate our Trouble Sunny. So that as Chain Link 2, we're summoning out both of our twins. His Chain Link 1 resolves. He grabs his token and he grabs his Fateful Adventure. And then upon that, our new chain will activate. Before he has a chance to do anything, our blue twin will pop the Fateful Adventure. Our pink twin 
will draw a card. So we're going plus one, he's going negative one. Our opponent's going to go for Vishuda out of the hand here, special summoning it to the field. Every time he summons, he takes 200 damage and we gain 200 life, which does add up. Our opponent now is going to go into Baron de Fleur. Now, that's a bit of a problem. Uh, he's going to use the Red Rose Dragon in the graveyard, summon the Rocks Rose Dragon. This damage is ticking up. He's going to search his deck for the Red Rose Dragon here. I'm assuming he must already have the Basil Rose Shoot. He's going to pop our, our uh, spell card here. Vishuda's going to return the Blue Twin back to the deck. There's the Basil Rose Shoot. Now he's going to Link Summon into Haki Fibrax. Uh, Hulk is going to summon out from the deck the Jet Synchron. So our opponent is going a little bit nuts here. Uh, our opponent's going to go for the Aurora Dawn, grabbing all three of the tokens here. Now we're going to Nibiru. Our opponent's going to go for Baron de Fleur. That's when we're going to flip up our Forbidden Droplet. Our Pink Twin's going to the Grave off of Nibiru anyway, so we might as well use it to negate the uh, Baron de Fleur. Could also have used the Imperm, same effect, uh, but the Pink Twin's not going to the Grave anyway. So there's the, uh, there's the Nibiru. We'll slap it down on the field, give him his token. And then he passes turn back to us. And look at our hand. We've got our full combo all set up again. So we've got Secret Password's going to grab the Sunny Snitch. And our opponent realizes that, that that's the only card we need for, for our full combo. And he just gives up. It's as simple as that. So yeah, that, that's pretty much as simple as the deck is. It's a one card combo backed up by God knows how many hand traps. It's that simple. So yeah, not much to dissect there after that game. So let's get into game number two. Already getting into game two. We're going first again. You know, we got a little bit lucky when we were playing here. We've got that sunny snitch. Uh, we're going to grab the... Now again, here's something we need to discuss. If you already have one of the starters in your hand, uh, you're going to grab one of these costumed twins here. Uh, what they can do is, if you control the twin of the opposite color, you can special summon it. So our opponent actually Ash Blossoms us here. We could have hit it by Call by the Grave, but that would turn off our one too. So we decided, listen, we'll let him have it. We don't even need to negate this Ash Blossom. Uh, because we have the extender in our hand, all we need to do is special summon it, and we've got the full play anyway. Evil Twin, uh, the pink one comes out, re-summons blue, Link Summon into blue, blue re-summons pink, and you draw one again it's super simple plays again anyone can get this then you go into trouble sunny and you set whatever you've got to set and pass so we've got uh we've got maxi we got ash we got called by the grave and we got our pop so there's four interruptions and a draw our opponent's gonna go for freight for patchwork he's playing despia uh the deck that we put up on the channel last before this by the time this is scheduled uh, he's got branded opening here, so that's the thing. I even in my video I said that patchwork is ash bait, but they're just right to ash it. It's a very powerful card. Our opponent's gonna ditch their dramaturge to grab Alibur to hand. Uh, they decide to grab it to hand a normal summon it to avoid giving us a card off of our uh, maxi. He's gonna grab branded and red, and then he's gonna just gonna raw activate it. Now one of the counters to branded and red is called by the grave. So. For you to conduct your fusion summon, you have to successfully add the card you targeted to your hand. So once he activates and targets the Dramaturge, we're going to use Call by the Grave to banish that Dramaturge. So now no target means no summon. Simple as that. And he goes into main phase 2, eventually ends his turn. During the end phase, we're going to tribute to use the Trouble Sunny, but we get hit by Call by the Grave. So you know what? It was only fair. We had it to counter him. He has it to counter us. That's life. You know, that's again, as I said, one of the big weaknesses of the Trouble Sunny. It's very, very prone to call by the grave. Your opponent knows it's coming. We get Forbidden Droplet, but we've got full combo. And our opponent knows it, and they give up. Like, that. this is all you need. You need one twin to restart the whole process. It's nuts. It's so strong. That's why a lot of people play three of both evil twins. I play two and three. Uh, but again like people just see it coming like he only had two cards left the possibility of him getting through that another trouble sunny and a droplet is slim to none so again uh props to our opponent for trying as hard as he did but it was just it was an uphill battle for him it was a very very tough uh hill to climb for our opponent there so fair enough uh let's just get into game number three 
all righty game number three and again we are going first we want we got super lucky during these coin tosses i make a point of not cherry picking duels but we got real lucky uh so here we're, we're gonna use our sunny snitch to grab one of our things we already had we already had starters and extenders for days uh so we are just going to get summoning like we always do we're gonna summon into our blue twin blue twin revey pink twin and draw one what we get in the beer route uh, which is unfortunate. <laughs> it's very unfortunate. And uh, we have a small token, 2200 attack, so not that big. We banish 10, draw 2, set 1, and pass. So, not the greatest of situations to be in. I'll be perfectly honest, I've been in more comfortable duels in my life. So, our opponent is actually playing a very interesting deck. Uh, summons Ecclesia and then uses Siege to Fleur to destroy one of my cards and one of our opponent's cards. We're going to use Max C here, but he's going to chain the Ecclesia to the maxi now we're going to use imperm and it's going to get destroyed anyway we mainly just want to negate this column so if he happens to play a spell or a trap here it gets negated but it's wishful thinking at best uh, our opponent summons the iris sword soul which is very interesting off of the uh, ecclesia and then siege comes out to the field that's two level eight uh, but we do have max c in play so our opponent's not doing too much summoning here which is unfortunate because we had the Nibiru. Uh, so he passes turn back to us. It's a very rough situation, but we have our starters. We're just going to summon. We're going to try to get playing. Our opponent goes for Max C. Maximus C really puts us in a rough uh, spot. We don't really have the option of not playing, so we're just going to summon out our Sky Cavalry. Sky Cavalry then would typically summon out our uh, Zeus, but we get popped by the Iris Sword Soul. It is unfortunate, but what are you going to do? That's just life sometimes. A very interesting deck from our opponent here. Like the Iris Sword Soul is its effect is situational, but very interesting. And being able to summon it from the deck so easily off of Ecclesia is, you know, that maybe that's maybe there's something there. That, that could totally be something that people have just been overlooking. Uh, but yeah, that's game number three. I mean, it's as simple as it looks. Our opponent just beat us down with big oil monsters. You know what I mean? Like proper good format style. But yeah. That's game number three. Let's get into the deck profile. Alrighty, so having a look at the profile. So, normally we would start by cutting the fluff, which is what we're going to do, but there's a lot of it. So, count how many cards we're getting rid of in terms of random slots you can play with. One, two, three Effect Failure, three Maxi, three Ash Blossom, two Lancia, one Nibiru. 3 Infinite Impermanence, 2 Forbidden Droplet, Cross Out Designator, and 2 Call by the Grave. Half of this deck is Hand Traps. 20 cards. That's nuts. And that's like, and that's me wanting to play additional combo cards. People don't even play the Parallel Exceed. People typically would only play one of the Live Twin, uh, one of the Pink Starter. They can get away with this. Uh, they don't always even play the Extenders. Like, I. I too they some people just play it like this uh this is a card they have to play for the trouble sunny to resolve its effect uh more consistently people don't really play uh desires what you're looking at this is the absolute minimum you can get away with uh, and it still be a left wind deck this is all you need uh it's nuts i would i would play three of the uh, three of each twin i think it's uh, i get it but i think it's a bit silly to not do it uh, especially if you're playing desires like i do so this is this is typically like the the live twin package if you will so how does it work uh these two are your starters right uh you normal summon one while you control nothing else it will special summon the other and then you go in to use those two to link into into pink pink will resummon the blue from the graveyard use those two to link summon in the blue blue will resummon pink pink draws a card and then you go into trouble sunny that's your entire combo. All you need is one of these two cards. What do your extenders do? Well, they extend. If you need to, or if you have multiple resources, you can extend into additional plays, or uh, these guys are really good at recovering if your live twin gets impermed, ashed, veilered, anything like that. These guys are phenomenal recovery options, and they have additional effects in the graveyard that are just kind of sort of there. We're not going to worry too much about it. Uh, but yeah, these guys are really good recovery options the secret password the secret password searches your deck for sunny snitch sunny snitch on activation will search for one of these two or your extender if you already have a starter 
It also, whenever your opponent summons, you gain 200 life and they lose 200 life, which, you know, is neat. It gets a little bit of chip damage in, and that does come up because the deck uh, isn't the greatest at OTKs. It does need a little bit of help, so every bit of damage you can get, the better. So yeah, that's literally the deck. Uh, and then this card here, it has a whole bunch of effects. Uh, if you can get it out onto the field, it isn't too difficult to summon. You just tribute two Link Monsters, which you can do very easily uh, with your Live Twins. Uh, while it's face up, it, it basically if you have both your Evil Twins in the graveyard, its attack points become uh, 4400. It has a bit of a weak evenly matched type effect where your opponent, if they have three or more cards, they have to send everything bar two to the graveyard, which is okay uh generally speaking this card won't see a lot of play on the field it's mainly there to be sent to the graveyard when using the effect of trouble sunny during your turn uh so don't worry too much about this it's just a necessary engine card uh but yeah everything past that is just completely up to you to play with most people just stack it with 472 hand traps uh i personally like to play parallel exceed uh purely because well i mean i want to play cards i want to play like actual like combos and, and cards and stuff so like maybe that's just me i don't know uh but parallel exceed will let you you know extend in the additional link monsters it also gives you the option to win the babuska uh so babuska switches all monsters to, to defense while it's in defense and defense position monsters can't activate their effects uh so babuska is really really cool especially considering your big boss monsters are going to be link monsters so they're unaffected by the babuska uh, so I really like this guy, very easily summoned off of Parallel Exceed. Uh, so do bear that in mind as an option. I, I do really like that. Uh, so two Parallel Exceed is fine. And everything from there, uh, I'll also run two Desires, just as follow-up. And everything from there is just hand traps. Like you saw before, you run whatever hand traps you want. I don't have that many to choose from. So I just run the ones that I have, sort of thing. Uh just in terms of like what my favorites are this is just what i have i don't have ghost ogre i don't have bell i don't have reaper i don't have any of those cards but if you do have them put them in go for it go nuts moving into the extra deck the extra deck again really really straightforward you've got your twins for your combos you've got your trouble sunny to be spanned and the rest of the extra deck is filler occasionally you can go into the unchained abomination off of your two twins this guy is really really strong at the end phase of every turn pop a card whenever a card is popped except by his own effect pop a card and i believe there's one other condition so you can destroy like three cards per turn off of this which is really cool i'm a big fan ip mask arena you can summon summon off a of parallel exceed to do some additional summoning potentially into your abomination on your opponent's turn i don't know then you have your Underworld Goddess to get rid of things that can't be gotten rid of, like your Crooked Crook and such. Uh, you know, the Arrival Cybers, all those types of monsters that just are around to stay unless you have something like this to get rid of them. So this is purely a, a tech option to get rid of specific matchups. And lastly, as I said, you've got the Babuska for the, uh, the, the Exceed, Parallel Exceed, a uh, very powerful card. And then you have your Zeus. So two level twos, can't be destroyed by battle. Swing into whatever you want. Uh, rank it up into Downard Magician, then rank Downard Magician into Zeus. And you have a two proc Zeus, a four material Zeus. Uh, and the extra deck, it's that simple. Honestly, the deck is ridiculously easy. You just literally normal summon one of these six monsters and you're good to go. The rest of the deck is just hand traps. So again, I'm not going to sit and ramble on about a deck we've already broken down. So if you like what you see and you want to see anything more, subscribe, leave your comments down below for your suggestions in terms of how you would make it better. Uh, you know, a lot of people, nobody really runs DPE with this anymore. Uh, nobody really runs the artifact engine. If you watched my previous video on Life Twins, like we had so much going on. I feel like it was more fun before. There was just more going on. Whereas now it's very CME. Uh, so I may go back, I may revisit that initial idea, maybe put something up on that, run some comparisons. But that'll do us for now. Uh, that may be a video for another time. That's all I'm going to chat about here today. If you, again, as I said, if you like what you're seeing, feel free to subscribe, leave your recommendations below, and I'll see you on the next one.